It's great to speak with you again, Kwame. Um, it's been a while since we've talked. Uh, we've did, done interviews in the past. Uh, today, I'm looking forward to hearing your the topic on human rights and disabilities in the supply chain. Uh, can you start by providing a brief background of yourself? Um, uh, hello, Dustin. Uh, thank you very much. It's great to speak to you again as well. Um, uh, I am uh, so I've done supply chain work uh, throughout Russia, Central Eastern Europe. Uh, Western Europe, uh, South America, and a little bit in Asia. Um, uh, I've, in the last few years, I've kind of evolved away from supply chain as in terms of the supply chain processes um, for the supply chain. I've taken that understanding into a more sort of human rights kind of uh, focus. And much of the, the concepts of supply chain management, supply chain understanding, uh, and process management are actually very... Um, very applicable uh, in the human rights field. Uh, everything really needs a process around it and the, the understanding of how you sort of um, produce cause and effect and thus demonstrate uh, the needs and the capability to meet the needs in the human rights field really kind of come out of supply chain understanding. Thank you. Uh, there's some, some terms here I'd like to ask about. Um, can you tell me, can you talk about what is uh, inclusion? Um, ADA and the UN conventions on human rights and disabilities in the supply chain environment. Well, so it's 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 a, it's a very good question. So much of it starts from the ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act, and it's it's very important to note that the Americans with Disabilities Act came out of civil rights legislation uh, and the Civil Rights Act of uh, I think '64. Um, so based on that legislation, uh, the concept was to create a foundation that would prevent discrimination towards uh, people who at that point in time uh, sort of disabilities were looked at as physical disabilities, whether it was motor, whether it was um, hearing, whether it was visual. Uh, since then, the, sort of the ADA has come to encompass um, autism, it's come to encompass uh, PTSD, has come to encompass um, you know, it, ADHD, so any number of learning disabilities, uh, and currently actually about 50 million Americans classify under uh, ADHD. Uh, and one small point, or actually it's a very large point, is that uh, much ADHD sort of understanding uh, the spirit around it uh, is in many ways most of us will get old, and when we get old we will have some sort of disability that we will have to deal with. And so ADHD kind of creates that sort of understanding at an, at an earlier point in our lives that says uh, disability is serious and many of us will have a disability that we will need to deal with. So better to look at it now and better to address it now rather than wait till we are in our 60s or 70s and have to, in essence, alter our environments and ourselves to meet an environment that's not suited for the disability when we could start much earlier. So inclusion, in essence, springs from sort of this concept of what do you need to do, create, build, design, and it's inclusive design or universal design that offers the best sort of space, understanding, and utilization for people with any range of disabilities that classifies under the ADA. Much of ADA legislation and ADA thinking has then gone into human, uh, UN Human Rights Conventions because it's, it's, it's in many ways America's somewhat at the forefront in some ways, you know, other countries are very much at the forefront. But it, it's around the same spirit of uh, basically saying it, one should not and cannot, and societies cannot uh, discriminate based on, based on disability and or race. That's what inclusion is. Why is this so important? Uh, it's important because you know, part of what, so it's interesting, you know, if, if, if we take in essence, one of the most effective presidents, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, someone with polio and someone who spent much of his last two terms in a wheelchair. Um, you know, whether it was the New Deal, whether it was shepherding us into World War II and out, you know, uh, there are significant people in history that have had disabilities. Helen Keller, um, you know, arguably the smartest man in the world right now, Stephen Hawking, is, is classify under ADA. So the concept of, of 
you know, not limiting people based on a physical or mental misunderstanding is paramount to um, this work. And again, basically what the ADA says and what you and convention say are if we equip early enough, if we design early enough, um, if we include early enough, it will allow, allow people to reach a potential that, that we can't necessarily understand because of our limited understanding of it. And I go back to when the ADA was originally written, it was based on a civil rights legislation based on a finite group. As our ideas of, as our technology grows, as our ideas of who we are grow with our environment um, and with our, our spaces around us, a, a, our concept of actually what is disability also grows, but then again, the concept of what is the ability that is inside of the disability is also demonstrated uh, pretty much all the time. So um, that's why it's important because it, it's really, we can't prejudge someone based on a, 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 an idea that we're not really fully capable of understanding. And so if you include people in the understanding at the beginning, you remove barriers and you remove the ability to, in essence, discriminate. That's why it's important. How is this carried out in practice? So basically, in, 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 in terms of supply chain, this is where it sort of comes into play, is that much of the concept of universal design and inclusive design is about, for example, urban planning. It's interior design. It starts very much with architecture and engineering. So in terms of building the capacity that um, people who are, are, in essence, the critical mass of architects and designers and urban planners that think about ADA and think about universal design, when they start a design project, when they start, in essence, planning, it allows for a greater level of accessibility everywhere. And one of the things that we understand uh, is that getting students early into the cause, getting students early into the understanding of how to design for, um, a, or how to implement universal design and how to understand universal design creates living spaces and city spaces that are much more permanent and have much more sort of staying power. So again, it, it's understanding almost like the, it, it, it's reverse just in time, meaning, you know, okay, I'm going to have everything there right at, the, right at the period of time that I need it. Here you have to get on the upstream. You have to get people in on the upstream that are able to carry this forward to reach a critical mass to where we look at the world in a different way. That's why it's very important. Thanks for sharing today on the topic of human rights and disabilities in the supply chain. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, my pleasure, really. Uh, it's been a, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, it, it, it's something that's very, very important, I think.